Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you all of the books that I've got recently. The vast majority of them are art books. The rest of them I've bought for inspiration for art because there are illustrations in them that I really like and I'd like to take a little bit from them and introduce a few elements from those illustrations into my own artwork. So let's have a see how many books have I got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 ten. Ten, that's a nice round even number, isn't it? I should start with the biggest book. So the first book I've got to show you, this is one that I got from the library. And this is World War One. Oh, it's reflective. There we go. World War One in cartoons by Mike Bryant. And this book I picked up because I really love poster art and there are a lot of examples of poster art in this book. There's a lot of black and white illustrations, a lot of these coloured poster art illustrations and I thought that this would be really good for inspiration. I love things from this time period anyway, I love really old films. I just thought that this would be a great book to look back into history and see how people were illustrating back in the 1800s and in the early 1900s. So I'm looking forward to flicking through this book quite a lot over the next few weeks. I'm not going to show you the next biggest book because I'm going to save that one to last because that's the one that I'm the most excited about. I just picked it up today. I had to order it in from somewhere else and I'm so so glad that I waited to film this video until this book arrived because I'm so excited about it. Okay, so the next book is one that I started reading this morning and that is Paint Like Renoir. Unlock the Secrets of the Master of Impressionism and that's by Damien Callan. I'm not sure if I've pronounced that right. I started reading it this morning and I got to chapter two. It has many quite large examples of Renoir's work and Renoir was um, one of the leading artists in the Impressionism movement. So when I first started doing art properly, I wasn't interested in Impressionism or anything that was slightly illustrative or abstract. I was only interested in things that were super, super realistic, hyper-realism. I just thought that that was the absolute high end of art in terms of showing how skilled you are. At this point in my art career, I'm a little bit more drawn to impressionism, things that are a little bit more colorful, a little bit more abstract, a little bit more illustrative. So I was really excited to see this book. There's a lot of studies of all of his paintings. It shows you how to set up an indoor studio, an outdoor studio. It shows you what types of canvases to use, how to take your paintings outside, how to turn a cardboard box into a painting carrier, what types of easels to use. It's just really informative, not just for impressionism painting, but for plain air painting, oil painting, if you're interested in anything like that, this book seems like it's going to be a really fantastic and informative read for any of those topics. I mostly bought this to flip through and look at examples of Renoir's work. I'm not as familiar with it as I would like to be, but I did start reading it this morning and I found a lot of really helpful tips in it, so I am going to read this cover to cover. The next book that I'm going to show you isn't an art book, it does contain a lot of beautiful illustrations. Now if you follow me, probably if you follow me on Instagram you might know this, at the beginning of this year I got really heavily into gardening and I have wanted to get a book on gardening for a long time but they tend to be quite expensive. Last week I found this and it is The Ornamental Kitchen Garden by Geoff Hamilton. If you're familiar with my garden, I have flowering plants, vegetables, fruiting plants, and I have them all mixed in together because I've got quite a small garden. The reason that I got into gardening was because I wanted to start growing my own fruits and vegetables, but after doing, after starting doing that, I got really into flowering plants as well, so I've just mixed everything up. And this is what this book's about. This would be so helpful for people who are painting any type of plant, whether that's fruits, vegetables, or flowering plants, because there are so many reference images in here. This is a spread of autumn plants, and it's got a picture of passion fruits, pears, there's just so much information in this, and so many beautiful pictures. So I will definitely be using this book 
as reference images for my artwork as well as learning how to make the most out of my garden. There are just so many beautiful illustrations in here, beautiful photography. This is just perfect if you're into anything to do with gardening or anything to do with artwork in the sense of like fruits, vegetables and plants and things like that. It's a great, great point of reference and I will keep this book forever. God, that's so nice. So the next book I would like to show you is a book about pop art. 50 works of art that you should know but it was a big movement in the 60s. It's so far removed from the type of art that I make and I'm really wanting to push myself in as many different artistic directions as I can at the moment and really try and learn and absorb as many different styles as I can just to give my artwork a little bit of a boost and freshen it up a little bit. I've just been feeling like like I want to go into a little bit of a different direction because I'm self-trained, I have to self-train, I have to educate myself so I thought getting a book about pop art would be really interesting because it's not something that I have very much knowledge about. There are quite a few artists in here that I've never heard of. The imagery is so beautiful and there's a lot of information. See Andy Warhol, there's a whole little section here about Andy Warhol and I went to go and see an exhibition about Andy Warhol last year for my birthday while I was in Prague and I saw a few of these prints and they're amazing actually to see in person so I just can't wait to read about all of these different artists and um, really kickstart my learning about the pop art culture. On a similar theme, the next book I'm going to show you is about street art. This book is by Simon Armstrong. Street art is something that I always find really interesting when I'm traveling. I always find it quite a joy to stumble across a really beautiful piece of art on the side of a building. And there was a place that I lived a few years ago in Manchester that was really close to the Northern Quarter and there's quite a lot of beautiful street art there to go and look at. Again, I don't have very much knowledge about it, there's not very many street artists that I know about, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to learn about a few different street artists and a few different styles. There's a lot of imagery in this book and I'm a very visual person, I think all artists are very visual people. As well as being something that I would love to read, it's going to be something that I really love to flip through and just look at the images in here and get some inspiration for my own artwork. And I just find it really interesting because there's a lot of energy behind street art, a lot of passion behind street art, a lot of, not personality, a lot of... There's a lot of attitude behind street art which I just find that really intriguing and I'd love to learn more. So this next book that I'm going to show you is something that I'm really really excited to read and it's about an artist who at the time that I was starting my art career I was very much like no I don't like his artwork, it doesn't interest me, it's too sketchy, it's too scribbly, it's not refined enough, it's not realistic enough, I don't like it. But as I have progressed through my art career, I've changed my mind completely and the artist that I'm talking about is David Hockney. Now if you know me at all and if you don't, hi my name's Camille and I am from West Yorkshire in Bradford. Well, I ordered some books from the library a couple of weeks ago and two of them were David Hockney related books and this book is written by his brother John Hockney who I'd actually never heard of John Hockney but it's basically the story of their life. I haven't started reading it yet but there's a lot of photographs in here, a few examples of David's work and I thought it would just be really interesting. I find artists life so interesting so I'm really excited to read this book. I'm going to put this on my list of what I'm going to read next and I really can't wait. There are quite a few examples of David's work in here. I've been watching one or two documentaries about David recently and I've watched quite a few interviews with him and he seems like a very interesting man so I'm excited to read about his life from the view of his brother or read about his brother's life with David in the background especially since we're from the same city. The next three books that I'm going to show you, they're not really in the genre of art but I have bought them for an artistic reason. Now you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about but you'll understand when I show you. The first book that I got and I bought this a few weeks ago when I went to Skipton and I picked up this 
Jacqueline Wilson book. I used to read Jacqueline Wilson books a lot when I was younger. I have like a really nostalgic connection to Jacqueline Wilson. I love her as an author, but if Jacqueline Wilson was to have an artistic divorce from the illustrator Nick Sharrett, I would be incredibly upset because his illustrations are something that I just absolutely adore. I'm buying a Jacqueline Wilson story and I'm getting Nick's illustrations at the same time and they just work so perfectly together. Love the simplicity in Nick's illustrations and at the moment I'm kind of doing Inktober. Uh, so Nick's illustrations in the Jacqueline Wilson's books are a great source of inspiration for that type of artwork. An illustration of Jacqueline herself, just so cute. This book is about Jacqueline, Jacqueline's childhood. I'm very interested to read it. I didn't actually even know that she'd written a book about herself. The next two books I'm going to show you are by the same author and the author is also the illustrator of the book and these are also extremely nostalgic to me. These are books that I read when I was a little girl and also they are illustrated in pen I could be wrong but it looks like fine liners to me, I'm not too sure. And these are the Millie Molly Mandy books by Joyce Lancaster Brisley. Now if you've never read these books, they are so wholesome, they're so sweet and they're so cute. And the illustrations are beautiful so I just wanted to show you one of my favourite illustrations which is this one of Millie Molly Mandy's bedroom. It's all just in black pen. If you look really closely, you can see how she's used the pen really simply to illustrate different textures. So you've got the wood here and the stripes on the ceiling and then the different texture of the carpet and the little rug there. So I think little books like this are a great source of inspiration if you're looking to do something similar. This one is more of Millie Molly Mandy and this one is Millie Molly Mandy's Spring and they're just such pretty covers as well aren't they? So cute. I love the way that she's illustrated the character and I love that at the beginning of each book there's like a map of her little village that she lives in all with um, little descriptions of who lives where and what shops are which. It's just such a great visual not just for a child but for an adult as well so I'm clearly not a child anymore but I just enjoy these illustrations so much and the stories are so sweet I would highly recommend these books to anybody really you don't have to be a child to read them there are no rules and I can't wait to reread them I haven't read all of the stories I only had one book when I was younger um, so I'm looking forward to discovering a few different stories as an adult now the last book and the most exciting book the book that I've just picked up this morning I had an appointment at 10.40 to come and collect this book and it's a very special David Hockney book and this is Drawing From Life this is like the perfect, perfect coffee table book. There's not many words in it, which is great if you're not a big reader or if you're somebody who just likes to sit down on the sofa and just like casually flip through a beautiful book. I mean, it's freaking stunning. It's so beautiful. Oh, okay. So this is just the introduction. Sorry, it's so big. Every single page has got these huge examples of David's work. There's a lot of portraits in here so if you're into portraits this is a great book for inspiration and examples of different ways to create portraits. There's like a whole chapter about his mother. This is a chapter about his mum. He's drawn his mum so many times. All sorts of different media. This is a portrait of his mother in ink. This is a portrait of his mother in coloured pencil. Another ink portrait. I'm just so into ink portraits at the moment. And there are so many ink portraits in here. Maybe if I hold it like this, that's probably better, isn't it? Can you see the pages though? I don't know. I, the screen's so small. So every single page, there are so many different examples of portraits in different mediums. There's pencil, there's oil paint, there's watercolour, there's coloured pencil. There's ink portraits, there's just, there must be over a hundred at least. How many pages? Are, well, we're on page 123 here, so there's definitely over a hundred portraits in here. So this, I just can't wait to sit down and properly go through this book. It's just going to be such a treat. If you are interested in having a look at any of these books yourself, I am going to link them all below for you if I can find them. 
but otherwise I wanted to share with you the way that I've been collecting books at the moment. A lot of these books are from the library and obviously with the coronavirus thing at the moment you can't, well, I'm not sure, I don't know if it's just my area that's like this, but you can't actually go directly into a library at the moment. You have to reserve your books online and then go in and collect them. The people that work at the library like gather the books for you and put them in a little brown paper bag and then you just go in and pick them up. And so that's what I've done for the past few weeks. For a few of these books, some of the books I have bought, but for the rest of the year I have had an app on my phone. And again, I don't know if this is just a local, localised app. It's this app, app here, it's called Borrow Box. So what you do with this app is you link it to your library account. So you can borrow books through the app, you don't have to go to the library at all. You can get audiobooks and ebooks, and they also include all the illustrations, it's not just text. So that's what I've been doing for most of the year when I was too frightened to go to the library because I wasn't sure about touching the books and I wasn't sure how long the virus can live on books. So that's what I've been doing for most of the year and that has been really wonderful. Especially for listening to books while I'm working. That is how I've gotten through so many books this year. And at the moment I am on, I think I'm on my 89th book. I'm on my 91st, 91st? I'm on my 91st book of the year at the moment. And I am reading about 10 different books at the moment. I just love reading so much. I can't physically sit down and read a book all the time. So I have a little moment in the morning when I'm having my morning cup of tea and then I have a little moment in the evening when I get into bed and I'm just about to go to sleep. I'll read for half an hour or an hour and I also read while I'm having my lunch. So I try and fit in as many books, physical books that I can actually sit down and read with my eyeballs. I try and do that as much as possible but for the rest of the time I listen to audiobooks. I manage to find plenty of books on the Borrow Box app and if not there are lots of audiobooks that are in the public domain that you can listen to for free and I haven't exhausted that list yet so I don't have an Audible account. So if you are looking at getting into audiobooks or ebooks those are great places to start. So I hope I have given you a little bit of inspiration with all of these books that I've shown you. If you're looking for ways to absorb some knowledge from some of these books but you don't have enough money to go out and buy them, I'll try and leave a few places in the description bar where you can listen to books that are free in the public domain. Definitely check out your local library and sign up to your local library and otherwise a lot of the books that I've purchased that I've shown I've bought from charity shops. I definitely haven't paid more than £2 for a book. It's just a great way to get books. I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week for the next video. I have no idea what I'm going to film yet so let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!